for just after the first of the year, January 19th. Uh, I believe it'll be in the Central Library and we'll uh, put out notice, uh, open house for folks to come in and learn where we're at in the process and provide input. And following that, we'll go back to the Planning Commission, have a public hearing through the Planning Commission. And once we've finished with the Planning Commission process and they've made their recommendation, then we will come back to Council. Uh, this is a code update, so it requires Council action in the form of an ordinance amending the Municipal Code. And that would happen depending on how it plays out with the Planning Commission, I would certainly think sometime in February or March. Uh, we were required uh, to have our updates done by the end of the year, by the end of 2016. So similar to the process with the comprehensive plan where there is a, a deadline that's set, uh, we've been going through the process and uh, working with Ecology. They certainly know that we're well underway and uh, are engaged in the public process and understand that we won't have the code finalized by the end of the year, but they um, are supportive of the public process that we're having and understand that we'll have the uh, recommended changes shortly after the first year. So from a regulatory perspective, we're okay. Uh, we'd rather have a comprehensive process than try to get it done by the end of the year. So that's where we're at. Uh, as I said, our code is in pretty good shape. Uh, we're in much uh, better position than many jurisdictions because many of our developers and certainly the city have been incorporating uh, many of these stormwater practices and principles for several years now, even though not specifically required by the code to do it. Uh, at all times. So that's where we're at. As I said, it's just kind of an information letting you know that we are underway. Uh, Jason is here. He uh, can certainly answer any questions that you might have about the process or about our stormwater code or the ecology permit if you have any, and we'd be happy to do that at this time. Committee members? No. Questions, no. comments? Council members? Uh, Lilliquist? Thank you. So um, with regard to strictly um, health and safety regulations, we often prohibit the bad, but we don't necessarily require or encourage the good. Uh, with regard to these LID principles being involved, how heavy or light a touch are we taking? Are we uh, doing sort of with the statutory minimum and making sure that we prohibit the bad, or are we going a little further than that and actually trying to maybe prohibit the mediocre as well or encourage the good? Yeah, so, <clears throat> Jason Porter, Public Works. Um, so really what we're doing is we're, we're planning on adopting the model ordinance that Ecology is requiring us to do. We felt that we've had a fairly progressive stormwater ordinance that's um, required most of these things, um, really would say to the maximum extent practicable. Um, but now what Ecology is doing is they've defined feasibility criteria. And so a developer would go through based on the scope of their project and what thresholds they might exceed. Um, use the Ecology manual to determine if low impact development is feasible on that site. And if it is, then they would have to use it. That's the biggest change in this ordinance is that they would have to evaluate the site to determine if infiltration or the use of some of these other low, low impact development techniques would be feasible. Feasible is that, that criteria has been established by the Department of Ecology. Do you think that the, the model ordinance, uh, the DOE that we're, we're following, um, is in general stronger or weaker than our current regulations or just different? Um, it's, it's different. Um, so when we, when we talk about like stormwater detention and treatment, those things are really going to be the same um, as they are now. So we're not making detention and water quality treatment any more stringent. It's really, it's evaluating your site early on in the development proposal to determine if low impact development techniques would be feasible. Right now it's a little more of an option, right? So is a developer could choose to evaluate their there property. any uh, discussion or evaluation whether the DOE's model ordinance is itself perhaps weak in some areas where we in the city might strengthens its deficiencies? I mean, no, we haven't done that level of, of analysis. Um, our current ordinance is, we'll call slightly more restrictive than the college's model ordinances already, and so we um, do regulate redevelopment a little bit different than ecology would be. Maybe you could say a little bit more stringent or um, apply some of these stormwater management practices. Um, but beyond that, we're really just looking at making sure we're meeting our NPDES permit requirement by adopting these rules. So I guess my opinion would be I'm really glad we're meeting the minimums and required standards. I would, I would like us to consider any chances to go a little better than that. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Uh, that is the end of committee.